You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. All set for your flight? Yep, I've got everything I need. Eye mask, neck pillow, T-Mobile, headphones. Wait, T-Mobile? You bet. Free in-flight Wi-Fi. 15% off all Hilton brands. I never go anywhere without T-Mobile. Same goes from a water bottle, chewing gum, nail clippers, okay, passport. Okay, I'm going to leave you to it. Find out how you can experience travel better at T-Mobile.com slash travel. Qualifying plan required. Wi-Fi were available on select U.S. airlines. Deposit and Hilton Honors membership required for 15% discount. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome to From Beneath the Hollywood Sign. If you love old movies, Hollywood history, or the golden age of filmmaking, you've come to the right place. This is the podcast that talks about amazing stories of Tinseltown from another era and fascinating conversations with writer-producer Steve Kubine and actress-writer Nan McNamara. So, Steve, did Ava Gardner and Howard Hughes have a good relationship? Well, they did until he dislocated her jaw. What? Well, don't worry. She hit him back with an ashtray. From Beneath the Hollywood Sign is the gin joint for you. Before we get to the show, we wanted to take a quick moment to honor one of our listeners. Tonight's episode is dedicated to Ron Denny of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, Ron, known as Will to his family, tragically passed away on February 4th, 2019. Ron was a huge fan of all things trivia, especially presidents and sports, and frequented trivia nights several times a week. He was due to graduate from the University of Louisville this May and was a loyal listener of our show, becoming a Patreon supporter last year. Ron was also born with hypoplastic right heart syndrome and survived three open heart surgeries. He was known to family and friends as a funny, clever, loyal, and kind man. From all of us at Triviality, we'd like to send our deepest sympathies to Ron's family and give a special thank you to his girlfriend, Brittany, and mother, Joni, for allowing us to dedicate this episode to Ron and thank him for his support. To echo Ron's wishes for a memorial contribution, uh, we are going to make a donation ourselves to the Adult Congenital Heart Association, ACHA.org. And there'll be a link in the show notes for anybody interested in donating or learning more. Thank you so much for letting us take the time to honor Ron and please enjoy the show. Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this is Triviality. The cream of the crop. Hello and welcome to Triviality, the game where a lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. That's right, I said the catchphrase uh, and I said I it right. Are you guys happy? I'm so happy right now. One take. <laughs> you know what I'm happy about? Neil has broken his perfect attendance record mm-hmm. and is not present today. Actually, he is present in the studio, but yeah. uh, he's not going to be featured on today's episode due to some unforeseen circumstances. Very mysterious. Mm-hmm. But that's okay because we have Jeff and Matt in the studio. How are you guys doing? Uh, it's a lot of pressure to live up to. I know. A Neil-less we gotta, we gotta, episode. We got to carry a Neil. We got to do some episode. impressions. Have you guys got to tell the, an embarrassing story. The newest Steven Spielberg thing. Yeah. <laughs> tell me about it, <laughs> oh, right? It's crazy, right? <laughs> you know, Dutch boy, etc. But the real reason to be excited today is we have a special guest host coming to us on Skype. Byron Grubman, how are you doing today? Pretty good. How are you? Good. And you're coming to us from Austin, Texas, and you're a United States champion on Patreon, so we appreciate your support. It's my pleasure, guys. Yeah, so we hear you uh, You found out about us at Geek Bowl via our advertisements that we were pushing. <laughs> Indeed. And yeah. all of our subliminal advertisements that you didn't know about. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, good work there, too. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Byron? Yeah, so I live, I oh, well, originally from Southern California, uh, moved to Austin after college. Um, I work in insurance marketing and sales and have been into trivia for about, three years now just doing kind of the geeks who drink pub trivia those are Um, great mm -hmm. a lot of fun and since i'm an avid gambler and geeks and geek bowl was in vegas yeah i decided it was a a happy coincidence and went and had a blast Mm, less happy for us in our bank accounts yeah if i recall (laughs) but i but i hope you can uh join uh geek bowl again next year and see us in chicago yeah no that sounded awesome yeah, they, they put uh, gaming tables into all the bars, so you can, you can still play some <laughs> poker if you want. Yeah, this is untrue. <laughs> no, no, I mean, he's not joking. Illinois has the most locations with uh, places to gamble Video of, any, of yeah. any state in the country. True. It's good to know. Yeah. I hope that's not one of his questions, because he's, he's written a great, uh, <laughs> a great game for us today. Um, I think I'm going to be by myself today playing against mm-hmm. you two guys. Uh, so I'm going to be, uh, since the cheese stands alone, I'm going to be the cheese. Mm-hmm. Uh, we should have thought about this. Yeah. What's happening in your lives, guys? 
that you need to talk about? That we just need to get out. Uh, you know, not not much. I was at a, a restaurant last night. This guy was being a real jerk to the waitress, so uh, I yelled at him a little bit. I saw bit. your Facebook post. Yeah, you know, he kind of had it coming. Uh, <laughs> so, so how about the mo- the mozzarella stick Avenger? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> You'll never have to remember, say that again, so don't worry about that. The Mats, the mozzarella stick Avenger. Okay, perfect. Got it written down. And let's toss it over to the rules guy. The rules of the game are simple. 20 questions split into two rounds worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there'll be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter the final round with the points that they've accumulated and will have a chance to wager 0 to 30 points on five categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop. You know that I'm the cream of the crop. Oh, thanks, rules guy. Yeah, we got two uh, cheese-themed uh, team names, I realized, mm-hmm. today. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, but uh, let's uh, take it away, Byron, whenever you're ready. We're excited for your game. All right. Um, so the, I, I don't have the traditional categories that you know you guys you know, get announced before each question, but the game follows a bit of a theme you'll kind of catch on as Ooh, we go. Cool. Mystery theme until we find out. Okay, so question number one. In the film featuring David Spade before he was a household name, John Favreau before his Marvel days, and Jeremy Piven before he was Ari Gold, what is the full name of the college that their characters all attended? I'm like that. I think it's Swingers, right? Okay. That's a John Favreau joint. I don't know the college. I don't know. Neil's in the corner over here shaking his head because he mm. knows all the answers already. Yeah. It's a it's a movie thing. Name a college. Uh, Brown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we said Brown. <laughs> okay. Well, I was singing to Swingers, too. Uh, Swingers is kind of a party movie, I think, and Arizona State University mm. is a party school, so that's what I went with. So the movie is called PCU. Mm. The university they all attended was Port Chester University. Okay. I haven't heard of that one, but uh, I've heard I'll of check it, it out. But It's definitely worth a, worth a watch. Cool. Question two. Speaking of ports, the DW, DFW airport is noted for the unique layout of its terminals. What fitting shape are the terminals laid out in? And that's Dallas Fort Worth. Too bad every time I go to Texas, I drive. I'm going to lock in here. Um, I think it's a star. I think that makes sense. It okay. is the Lone Star State. Yeah. So. Yep. I said a star. They're actually laid out in horseshoes or semicircles. Oh, oh man. <laughs> I you know I thought that and then I said no it's got to be a star. <laughs> it's a pain in the ass when you fly into one side of the horseshoe and have to go to the other side to catch your flight. Oh yeah, I don't like that at all. Yeah, so they were they were thinking all about the design and not the function there, huh? Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Hopefully we can get some points on the board with this one. All right. So nice softball, softball coming at us. <laughs> so question number three. Speaking of horseshoes, what is the playing surface of the game of horseshoes called? Uh, oh. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah. I think I think I'm gonna lock in too with uh, something that's also referred to in soccer, a pitch. Mm-hmm. Uh, we locked onto that pretty quick. I think it's a pitch. A pitch is correct. All, All right. right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Points on the board. All right. Tied game, ten to ten. All right. Question number four. Speaking of pitches, which film, which classic film was pitched as Die Hard on a Bus? Oh. oh. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Locked in. So if Neil were here, <laughs> channel your inner Neil. So Neil hasn't heard the question. Uh, he he's he's got no uh, no headphones on. But if I were to uh, talk about Sandra Bullock and uh, uh-huh. Keanu Reeves on a bus, maybe with uh, Dennis Hopper causing uh, it's bus causing matrix. some shenanigans. Bus matrix. <laughs> I, I did lock in with uh, bus dot matrix. Yeah. No uh, speed. Uh huh. It's about this bus whose speed couldn't go below a certain it's like speed <laughs> too except on a bus <laughs> i always said speed correct yeah great movie and it's so rewatchable on cable every time it's on i love it <laughs> oh yeah it sounds sarcastic but it's not Isn't jeff movie. daniels in speed Re- rewatchable yeah. on yes. cable it doesn't sound like an endorsement <laughs> if it's if it's on i'm not turning it does, off does jeff saying. daniels get blown up in speed in a house yes yeah he does it's like a trap set by dennis hopper and his famous cod piece from Waterworld. <laughs> All of this is true. <laughs> Question number five. 
Speaking of Keanu Reeves, in 2014's biggest Oscar snub, John Wick, the title assassin was able to team up with which actor after missing his opportunity to face off with him, face off against him 17 years prior. We're looking for the actor. Just John Wick 1 we're talking about. Correct. We always get to discuss because Ken has to lock in on his own, right? Yeah. Well, he could discuss with himself. He could. I kind of don't remember. I kind of remember him on, on his own in the first one. I'm trying to remember it. I remember John Wick 2 a lot better than I remember John Wick 1, I realize at this point. Really? Yeah. John Wick is a franchise that I I've seen both of them seen one yet. time. I love right. I love both of them. You haven't seen either? Oh, we're screwed. <laughs> okay, I'm locked in. Keanu Reeves movies in 1997. You're looking at, I think that's The Replacements. <laughs> Maybe that's after. No, it's probably after. Who was in The Replacements? Uh, that guy from the 7-Up commercials. That's not very <laughs> helpful. I know. Make seven up yours, remember? Oh. <laughs> He's hilarious. Vaguely, but I don't know. Well, we're going with that guy. That guy from the seven up yours. The course. guy who made seven up yours. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember in John Wick if uh, he teamed up with somebody in the first one. I just cannot remember anybody from The Matrix or anywhere else that he teamed up with. Could be wrong. Uh, I, rem- I know Lawrence Fishburne was in the second one, but mm. uh, since we're talking about the first one, I just put the dog. <laughs> so... I think what you guys missed in the char- in the question was he missed his opportunity to face off against this guy. So what if I told you he bailed on a sequel mm. that he didn't want to be in that Willem Dafoe was in? So he bailed on on Speed Two, missing his opportunity to face off against him. Gotcha. And ended up getting some help from Willem Dafoe in the first John Wick. Willem Dafoe was in the first John Wick. He was. I don't remember that at all. He was a fellow assassin um, with a contract to kill John Wick. That ended up helping John Wick escape from near certain death. Well, this sounds like an excellent excuse to rewatch John Wick. I mean, there's, yeah, it's always a good excuse to watch and John the, Wick. Apparently, the Make Seven Up Yours guy, that's Orlando Jones. Okay. Indeed. Thanks, not Neil. <laughs> Man, now I feel bad about this next one. We'll see. <laughs> it's about Seven Up. All right, number, <laughs> number six. Speaking of exceptional merchants of death, this folktale's title character, based on the exploits of Gilles de Rey, has become the all-encompassing category for a serial killer with which specific M.O.? Now, Gilles de Rey's folktale was called Bluebeard, if that helps. Am I not allowed to talk about serial killers because I'll bring the show down, Ken? <laughs> uh, I'm locked in, so you can talk about okay. serial killers all you want. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll take responsibility for bringing the show down. Don't worry. Um. <laughs> Because so Matt wrote down something which is interesting, which is like take a token or totem, right? Yeah, yeah. I I sort of like that because that's um, that's like the Dexter. Um, well, the Dexter mo was they had to be bad people. The Ed Gein mo was they had to look like his mother. He would kill them and then he would take a blood sample and that was his his mo. Oh yeah, yeah. I guess he would have a slide. That's more yeah. of his mo. What they're talking about is like the way that he kills somebody or something. So like it's like someone always you know cuts off a finger or whatever. Like that would be. Something like that. So I, th- I think what I wrote makes sense. So Sure. So you want to say it officially because I said it wrong? <laughs> yeah, I guess like a totem or a token of something of the yeah. half. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. what we're locking in with. And I said that the victims were patients and the killer was a doctor. Ken was definitely closer. Um, a blue beard serial killer is, if I said black widower, this is somebody who kills multiple wives or marries for the purpose of murdering his wives. Oh, uh, wh- widower. Okay. Gotcha. We were not close. <laughs> oh, well. I think they get easier from here. And if not, whatever. Question seven. Speaking of happy marriages, what was the name of Britney Spears' non-dancing, non-bald first husband? Mm. We're good, right? Yeah. Let me see it. I mean, I, I know what it is, but... Okay. Non-bald. I know. That's the joke. Yeah. So, Yeah. <laughs> It's hard. Yeah, I, I might be falling into the trap or I might be working my way out of the trap. Yeah. But uh, she married somebody named Jason Alexander. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I went with. I think that it was the summer of George and she married Jason Alexander. <laughs> Britney Spears is into short, stocky, bald. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. So Followed up K- with K-Fed. K-Fed was number two? K-Fed yeah. was two. Yeah. Gotcha. Popo we, uh, was, would she? Uh, did she get married in Vegas? Because I think we drove right by we the, drove, uh, the chapel that they got married in. Yeah, uh, Vivek uh, posted, uh, pointed out to us when we drove by. He did. So thank you for that. He also pointed out a strip club that was, quote, 
grim. <laughs> which, which I love that as a description of a strip club. God, that sounds terrible. Ugh, on a Tuesday afternoon, not where you want to be. <laughs> Question number eight. Speaking of Seinfeld, what extravagant purchase did Jerry Seinfeld make in 2000 for the purpose of accommodating his world-famous car collection? I don't think so. Is that Jay Leno? Well, uh, Jay Leno has one, yeah. Uh, big chin. It's not a. It's not quite that either. It's just like a studio lot. But hmm. I have an idea, but I'm not quite sure how to phrase it. Okay, I'm locked in. Okay, so he bought he bought like a like a brownstone or like a pretty expensive building in downtown Manhattan, mm-hmm. and he converted it to a garage. Like it was a it was not a garage, okay. but like it was. So I don't know if it was like a residential home or what it was, but it was like a five story building, and he converted it to a garage so he could store like. So four. he bought a home for his garage. I don't know if it was a home or what it was before. It's a house but for cars. It is, yeah. <laughs> Car house. But he converted like, like a pretty expensive piece of real estate into a garage, basically. <laughs> so. Um, so I guess we'll just say uh, Manhattan. He bought an expensive piece of Manhattan real estate? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I said he uh, treated them like airplanes and put them in an airplane hangar. One team is getting points. He purchased an apartment building in Manhattan. <laughs> a whole oh, wow. apartment building? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, jeez. And it has floors and everything for each car and or you know for each set of cars and he can't even drive in new york what is he doing storing his cars i need that many cars I mean, he, owns, he owns like 40 porsches so oh. who needs that at the, uh, yeah, yeah. whatever what's the deal with all those cars <laughs> <laughs> it's one for every day of the week thank you how many what days are the week jeff what do you think of those cars dutch boy there's 40 in the rich people week <laughs> hold on let me let me dig deep and see if i can bring bring dutch boy out Ooh. Ooh. I think that's very nice. <laughs> wow! I don't, I don't know what's wrong with me today, but I can't quite do it. <laughs> all right. I hate all of that. Continue. <laughs> Question number nine. Speaking of Manhattan, what was the Dutch name for the street that became Broadway? Who said speaking of Dutch boy? It was just a happy coincidence, to be honest. <laughs> There's another segue right there. I felt it coming. <laughs> Dutch, I am locked in. The Dutch name for... Broadway. Does anything sound familiar? No. I don't know if there was... Holland Way. <laughs> Broad Holland. Does that help? <laughs> Am I getting closer? <laughs> no. Say something. I'm trying in. to remember. There's something with Wall Street, but Wall Street well, and Broadway no, are two different streets. Wall Street was was actually a Maybe a because street. there was a wall there. Yeah. yeah. And that was its like base or something. Yeah. I know that. That doesn't help this at all. We'll just say um, Old Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am uh, I actually know Dutch quite a bit. Uh, Dutch boy kind of, you know, funneled his knowledge into me. Uh, I know that uh, Amster is uh, the Dutch word for avor pertaining to great width. And uh, dam is the Dutch word for street. Uh, none of that is true. I mean, it could be, but I went with Amsterdam. <sighs> As fans of the uh, world-renowned National Treasure franchise, I'm surprised you didn't get this. The name of the street is Here, H-E-E-R-E. Mm. Oh. The National Treasure fan decided to sit this one yeah. out. So. <laughs> oh, he shakes his head. He would have gotten it if he was here. What a shame. <laughs> Neil is uh... <laughs> committing ceremonial suicide. Yes. <laughs> Gruesome to watch, to be honest. That's why we're an audio podcast. <laughs> Question number 10. Speaking of Nicolas Cage. Come on. Speaking of where stuff is, ah. in which state would you find the minor league baseball teams, the Round Rock Express, and the Frisco Rough Riders? There, Matt. There's your sports question. <laughs> I'm locked yeah, in. Kind of. Locked in here. Locked in. So Frisco, Texas? I know it's not San Francisco. That's where I left my heart. Right. And not the Rough Riders. Because they weren't there. Correct. Right. Uh, they're from Saskatchewan. Round Rock kind of sounds like... Texas. You think it sounds like Texas? I think they both sound like Texas. Okay. I was thinking Arkansas, but I, I think I just got just hung Little up on Little Rock. <laughs> Doesn't Texas sound like this? I don't think so. Well played. Okay. We're going to we're gonna lock in and say that you went with a Homer pick and said Texas. And I said Colorado, because it sounds like a place where you would find lots of round rocks. <laughs> One team getting points. Our local AAA team here is the Round Rock Express. All right. Shucks. 
and Frisco is up near Dallas. Makes sense. Yeah, I was pretty sure about Frisco being in Texas, so this episode is called Jeff Got a Sports. <laughs> <laughs> After round one, looks like the cheese standing alone has a mere 30 points, while uh, the mozzarella stick Avengers mm. are uh, climbing high with 50 points. Although the, the good news for you is we're not twice as good as you, so that that's is, something. That is good. Yeah, technically we should be, so bad on us, I guess. Are you ready for the swing round? Yep, we sounds are. good. Sounds good. All right. I'm going to list off 10 sports organizations, professional and college, and you'll have to give me the creature slash object that their mascot is. Mm -hmm. For example, as I heard on an earlier episode, the Oakland Athletics has an elephant as their mascot. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So number one, the Seattle Mariners. Number two, the San Francisco Giants. Number three, the Washington Nationals. Number four, the San Antonio Spurs. Number five, the Sacramento Kings. Number six, the Boston Red Sox. Number seven, the Texas A&M Aggies. Number eight, the Alabama Crimson Tide. Number nine, the San Diego Padres original mascot. And number 10, the Phoenix Suns. While we uh, deliberate over these uh, answers, can you run us down on our Patreon situation right now? And yes, if you are considering supporting us on Patreon, you can do so at patreon.com slash trivialitypodcast, much like Byron does here. We can uh, offer you some great perks, including bonus episodes and some uh, small little tokens of our gratitude, which uh, uh, come at all levels. So if you're uh, interested at all, uh, every little bit helps. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are ever grateful to our patrons who continue to keep this show running and growing. If you want to see some of those, uh, some of our patron supporters are posting those on the crop and you'll see some of those and you can interact with us and lots of trivia questions and fun times abound and also most importantly our blood sport pool is coming straight from the patreon group so and all the answers are locked in here so uh, if we can get those uh damn it neil G D i'll wait neil <laughs> we're on we're on our time just because he's not on the show doesn't mean he can be making up a whole bunch of racket in the background <laughs> and he and he grinds he's the coffee little, again. And he's laughing now. How dare right. he? This is this is so indignant. Gross abuse. You're over grinding. Use a flat bottom. Uh, if you could read those team names again, and we can provide our answers. All right. Number one, the Seattle Mariners. I said, uh, you know, I was thinking of the Gortons fishermen, but uh, just a fisherman will do. A generic fisherman. Uh, this one, it's a little weird. Uh, I think they're just going for alliteration, but I'm pretty sure it's some kind of bullwinkle ass looking moose. <laughs> yep, it's the Mariner Moose. There you go. Number two, my beloved San Francisco Giants. Uh, I went with uh, a subsect of uh, the giant population, which is uh, Cyclops. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I couldn't think of anything, so I was just thinking of noted hefty third baseman Pablo Sandoval, the Kung Fu Panda, and said, Panda. Uh, no points on that one. The San Francisco Giants mascot is Lou Seal. He's mm. a seal. It's a Lou Seal. Uh, in honor of the San, the old San Francisco Seals. Number three, the Washington Nationals. I'm just picturing uh, Uncle Sam with his sleeves rolled up and his just like biceps and, and forearms glistening in the sun. So I went with Uncle Sam. Yeah, we were thinking uh, they have those. They run the presidential races. Oh, I just got that. Uh, they run presidential races in between innings, um, and I think their their main one is a is a Teddy Roosevelt. So we're gonna say Teddy Roosevelt. You guys were close with the patriotic theme, but it's Screech the Bald Eagle. Oh, that makes sense. Not Screech from Saved by the Bell. <laughs> not uh, not Dustin, whatever his Diamond. Name is. Yeah, he may fill in every now and then, but I can't <laughs> deny or okay. confirm that he's very available in case they need him. Number four, the San Antonio Spurs. The only thing that I can associate with a spur is a horsey. Mm -hmm. So I said a horsey. Yeah, we almost missed this one. Uh, and then Jeff was jogged my memory. that I believe this is a horse. The San Antonio Spurs mascot is just called the Coyote. Oh. What the hell? Do they, do they have some kind of horse mascot now? Maybe? I don't know. Maybe they have an alternative one. 
No, they just have like a horse every time. They just oh, run right through the through the court. David Robinson rides out on a horse every game. They play through the hoof marks and everything. <laughs> um, number was at five. The Sacramento Kings. Well, I think the L.A. Kings uh, of the National Hockey League have a lion, so I also went with a lion. Oh, that makes sense. I think that might actually be right. Uh, I had no idea, so I just said that they trot out Vladi Divac every game. <laughs> so they use Slams in the Lion. Mm. All right. Points. That makes sense. He is the king of the jungle. So. Mm-hmm. Look at this Spurs mascot. He's horrifying. <laughs> yeah. Super low rent Wiley Coyote with his like crazy bugged out he eyes. Looks like a uh, like an animatronic that you would <laughs> yeah. see at uh, you know Chuck E. Cheese. He got promoted something. from Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Number six, the Boston Red Sox. Yeah, so we've all been in a situation where we do our laundry and uh, a sock gets lost in the dryer somewhere and it disappears <laughs> to oblivion. So I said the Red Sox missing sock. And uh, we we were thinking real hard about this one, and I was like, "What's the deal with Fenway? Isn't don't they like worship the wall or whatever?" And Matt's like, "Yeah, I guess we did say objects, right?" So uh, we went with the uh, it's the Green Monster, right? To really hammer home the uh, you know Green Monster theme, it's called Wally the Green Monster. Mm. Do we get points for that? Yep. Correct. All right. We do Texas A and M Aggies number seven. Yeah, I, I knew this one 100%. Uh, it's <laughs> it's an Aggie. It's the uh, Texas A&M cockroach. Oh. <laughs> Slanderous. Um, <laughs> Why? I don't know. We'll allow it. That's fine. Uh, yeah, I had, no, I had no idea. I know Texas uh, Texas Longhorns is some kind of steer. He's very mean. Uh, and <laughs> may, I don't know. I just said maybe it was a dog, so he said dog. So after I locked in, I was like, what's an Aggie? It's because it's an agricultural university. Mm. So uh, <laughs> I looked it up. It's, it's a cowboy on their logo. I don't mm. know what their mascot is, though. So their mascot, and I can't believe you stumbled backwards into this, is Reveille the Collie. It's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. <laughs> I like failing upwards. Yeah, that was wonderful. So cockroach is wrong? <laughs> yeah. Correct, yeah. Cockroach is incorrect. Number eight, the Alabama Crimson Tide. The only one I knew for certain, uh, it's an elephant. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, pretty hard to miss. It's an elephant. Correct. That is Big Al the Elephant. Number nine, the San Diego Padres original mascot. So we all know uh, Padres means father in Spanish, and uh, it's uh, Jeff's dad. (laughs) He's actually the mascot. I was really worried that you were going to go Anchorman for the San Diego reference. Um. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, now that I think about it, it might be like a like a priest kind of guy. Uh, they do have something with that. Uh, sure. but that Clergyman. Yeah, yeah, but that is not what we locked in. We locked in with the San Diego chicken. One team getting points. The original San Diego Padres mascot was the San Diego chicken. So it's not. Currently, they have the, the swing and fryer. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> of course, <laughs> as you do. <laughs> so it's not Ted, Jeff's dad. <laughs> No. Is what you're saying? And this year, they actually started doing the Anchorman race with the four, um, the four main characters from Anchorman doing the same like presidents and sausage race. Oh, I don't believe Will Ferrell can run that far. I think Brick wins every time. And I gotta say, if if Ron doesn't win every time, they're doing something wrong. And number ten, the Phoenix Suns. Flappy the Phoenix. <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty sure that I remember this mostly because it, the the last scene when you load up NBA Jam is this person dunking off a trampoline. I'm pretty sure it's a gorilla. The gorilla is correct. Sun's gorilla. He was an unlockable character in NBA Jam too. After that swing round, it looks like I've fallen a little further. Uh, the cheese is at 40 points and the mozzarella Avengers 80 points. They're just crushing it today. Mm-hmm. We are finally twice as good as Ken, which... <laughs> I would hope so, mathematically. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's two of you and one of me, yeah. so we're all equal here. Are we ready for round two? Indeed. Let's do it. Number one, speaking of sports, if you were to place a bet on a team who had odds of a of plus 2,000 to win a sporting contest, how much would you have to wager to win $2,000? We're locked in. Yeah. So Matt taught me all this uh, when we were in Vegas. Just give me a second so I don't mess it up. How did your bet on the Blackhawks go? Not great. (laughs) Okay, I'm locked in. What did you say? Uh, I believe it would be 20 times your bet, so I put 100. 
Yeah, these are pretty much always based on hundred dollar bets. Uh, so we said one hundred points for both teams. Yeah, those are correct. Thanks for teaching me the answer to that question. Matt. <laughs> that was useful for something. Thank, thank you for teaching me how to sports bet, and then uh, you know, lose all ultimately your money. costing me a hundred dollars or so. <laughs> <laughs> question number two. Speaking of currency, within three, how many countries' currency does Queen Elizabeth II appear on? I'm just guessing here. I'm just going to say 11. I wrote down a number and Jeff looked at it and eventually nodded. Uh, so we are locked in with eight. Way low. Way the low. English Empire spans wide. wide. It's 35. Oh, jeez. think when you're queen, you can do what you want. <laughs> I, she basically makes no decisions. That's fair. Wow, 30. They just like her over there. They do care about those Canada gooses, though. Mm. Oh, They'll defend them with their lives. The toonies, the loonies. No, the actual gooses. Oh, yeah. Goose. They can keep them because they are very mean when they come down here, and I don't want them anymore. We say Canada, gooses because we're your quoting uh, Letter Kenny, by the way. We know yeah. it's geese. Question number three. Speaking of one's 30s, which singer married her former manager whom she met when she was 12 and he was 38? Mm, bad luck for you, person. This is right. <laughs> We're locked in. Boy, I don't know the answer to this one, uh, but it makes me think of that one episode of The Simpsons where Homer becomes the country singer's manager and she <laughs> falls for him. Laura uh, Lane. Yeah, it just kind of reminded me of Dolly Parton, so I said Dolly Parton. The man in question is in the news a lot lately, uh, Mr. Robert Kelly. Uh, the female or woman in question would be Alea. Alea? Incorrect. Incorrect. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, Celine Dion. Oh. Yeah, he recently passed away. But they met when she was 12 and he was 38. Wow. Oh, yeah, R. Kelly was in that. He was, uh, he was dating her pretty young, though, if I recall correctly. But I am wrong. Question number four. Speaking of hearts going on, who performed the world's first open heart surgery? Oh, I have no idea. I can't remember who did it either. Dr. Strange. And uh, I'm just thinking of a cool show uh, called The Nick, where they're mm. trying to figure out the, the surgeries, uh, just kind of playing jazz inside people's uh, cavities. And uh, mm. I just said Dr. Thackeray. The correct answer is Dr. Daniel Hale Williams. Thackeray. <laughs> <laughs> and he did it on himself, which is wildly no impressive. That I, that I had heard, but ah, I couldn't remember that. The Nick also has a self-surgery uh, feature in it. <laughs> I really I like d- the show. It's great. He does. There's yeah. two seasons, and it's it's really good. It is a really good show. I heard good things. It's gross. Mm. Question number five. Speaking of famous Daniels, what number is on the bottle of original black label Jack Daniels whiskey? I'm between two numbers, and you're going to defer to me, right? Yeah. I think it's this one. We can lock in. Okay. Uh, for the uh, 57 uh, variety. <laughs> varieties of of Uh, jack daniels jack daniels uh put 57 yeah i i can very clearly see the five and i can't remember if it's just five or if it's 15 or something like that but we locked in with five you were close old number seven number seven i guess i cannot clearly see the number i can't now tennessee whiskey Uh, yeah that makes sense is that the the number of years it is I don't know if it's formula number seven. I doubt it's how many years it is because oh. it's a little harsh for seven years. But yeah, yeah, it's probably two or three years. Question number six. Speaking of sevens, there are seven states that don't collect a state income tax. Name three of the seven. Also known as places I would like to figure out some relative of mine has died mm-hmm. and left me a bunch of money. I think these two are 100%. I'm pretty on board with that. Uh, and then... Because um, they don't collect... Um, I don't think either of those states collect income tax either. Well, that, and that's... <laughs> I'm basing this all on sports knowledge, to be honest, because people say they sign with these certain teams because they actually make more money. Oddly enough, that's how I'm going about it, yeah. too. And because they're like, oh, it's actually worth more to sign with this team because they don't have to collect income tax on it. So I said... Um, Alaska, Hawaii, just as guesses. I know they actually kind of pay people to live in Alaska, kind of like um, uh, universal income. Uh, Hawaii, just a guess. And uh, Florida, because uh, 
I'd really like the Blackhawks to get Artemi Panarin back, but mm-hmm. uh, he might go to Florida due to this uh, lack of income tax rule and Joel Quinville being the coach there now. So, yeah. But Florida is my third one. No bread man next year. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Florida is one of them. I think Texas is another one. And then we were kind of fighting on the last one and uh, just kind of stuck to the southeast and said Georgia. Both, the year, both teams got two correct out of those seven. Uh, the total list is Alaska, Florida, Texas, South Dakota, Washington, Wyoming, and Nevada. Uh, we didn't even say that any of the others. <laughs> no. So number seven, this will be the biggest reach in terms of connection of all the questions. Speaking of Las Vegas, what was the name of the casino which Sam Rothstein oversaw in Casino? Oh, I've never seen Casino either. Uh, nor have I. Perfect. It, do you think it's a made-up one? Because if it is, we're in trouble. <laughs> uh, it could have been a real one. Yeah. I will say it was a fictional casino. Ah, then we are based on a real one, but it's a fictional casino. We are bound. The Monty Burns I just started. Casino. I just started writing the name of a fictional casino that was actually a casino. <laughs> the Venusian. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> it's from Venus. Julius's Palace. <laughs> I don't know. I like New Jersey, New Jersey. Yeah, fine. It's not New York, New York. New Jersey, New Jersey. And I just, uh, I can't remember the movie well enough to guess a casino name, so I said the Sand Dollar. No points there. The casino was called the Tangiers, mm-hmm. and it was supposed to be a reflection of the, the way the Stardust came about. Oh. Gotcha. So, number eight. Speaking of ripping off places in Africa, which was the first country that's still in existence to have a colony in Africa? Um, I'm locked I, mean, in. I can tell you for sure which one it's not. India? It's not Germany. Okay. Because there were German colonies, but they, they're not Germany oh. until, you know, much later. Recently. Yeah. I'm trying to think of just like who is, who is uh, traveling. The Dutch had colonies in Africa. The British had colonies in Africa. The French. And, well, that's what I was I thinking. I don't believe the Portuguese did. Uh, the Spanish might have. Mm-hmm. I'm leaning French, and I don't know why. I'm leaning Dutch, but that might be because of the show. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the that, whole that hasn't theme. that hasn't steered us wrong too many times. It hasn't come up too many times either. So, also true. So it's due. You're right. We're locking in with Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> and I said uh, Italy. Jeff, you talked yourself out of the right answer. It was Portugal. Oh. They colonized Zanzibar in 1503. Zanzibar. That's, That's a where fun Freddie name Mercury too. was born. Mm-hmm. It's the only thing I know about it. And now I know that the Portuguese colonized it in the... I didn't take note of how, how long they held that colony, but that was the first one. All right. That makes sense. It was probably um, following like the Marco Polo stuff, trying to get to India, because Zanzibar is on the East Coast of gotcha. Africa. So. Okay. They were so close. Ish. Question number nine. Speaking of Portugal, the Portuguese water dog breed gained notoriety when it became which president's first dog? Lockton. Ooh. I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and just say this is Nixon's dog. Uh, you're talking about checkers? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is the hypoallergenic Bo Obama. Mm, I thought oh. it was... One team getting points there. It was President Obama. I'll All have right. to look that up. Dog, yeah, as you guys know, dog breeds are <laughs> not your thing. Not my strong suit. Yeah. I'm nothing if not a panderer, so... Number 10, speaking of famous people tied to Chicago, what is the name of the fictional town where most of John Hughes's movies were set, supposedly a suburb of Chicago? Mm. I always forget this because I'm like, Neil will remember. I don't have to worry about this. Yeah. And now Neil's not here. And he doesn't know the question and it's going to bother him. It won't. I think I'm locked in here. I think it's like it's it's. Modeled after Evanston, I believe. I was thinking it was like Glencoe. Yeah. But. Neil, like a, Neil a didn't hear the question and he wrote uh, what he thought the answer was to me and he is correct. <laughs> <laughs> that is irritating. Um, or I shouldn't say it's correct. It's the same as what I wrote. Oh, uh, that's not which good. Is, uh, which builds confidence. Mm-hmm. It's like, we say like, oh, you know, I'm thinking like Hoffman, but now I'm thinking that's just because of Hoffman Estates, which is right. a real suffer. I don't know. I'm going to hear it. I'm going to kick myself. 
That's fine. We'll say Berwin. Berwin. <laughs> yeah. I said uh, Shermer. Yeah, I first heard it in uh, Dogma when Jay and Silent Bob were trying to get to Shermer, Illinois. Oof. That round killed yeah, that us. Was, that was tough. But it looks like uh, you guys are still in the lead. The Mozzarella Stick Avengers, 100 points. I'm uh, hanging in there with 60 points. I, I got two right in that round. So As did we. Yeah. It was Yikes. tough. It was tough. Our Wonder Twin powers combined for not much. <laughs> let's, let's make some big bets in the final round here and see what happens. So we always do and lose. But it's okay. All right. So the final round, I will give you the categories. You can lock in your wagers. First category, dogs. Second category, Scarface. Third category, Superman. Fourth category, Old French Cathedrals. And the fifth category is North America. All right. And after some deliberation, the wagers are now locked in. Let's, uh, let's get those final round questions. So you guys may get mad at me for how these questions are. You know, the categories were picked, but... Uh, you'll see the theme once you start getting the answers correct. So question number one in dogs. How many times does Ubu bark in the little production company sequence, af- sequence after Simpsons episodes? Sit, Ubu. Sit. And then how many times does he bark? Question number two. Scarface. What's the name of the film where Al Pacino recruits Matthew McConaughey to consult for his sports betting racket? Question three. In Superman, which one-hit wonder sang the 1990s song Kryptonite? Question number four. Old French cathedrals. What is the apocalyptic name given to the backfield of the 1924 Notre Dame football team? And question number five, which minor holiday celebrates Mexico's defeat of France in the Franco-Mexican War in, 19, in 1862? Okay, and now while we uh, deliberate our answers, I believe Matt has a, a new review he wanted to read for us. Yeah, I love whenever we get new reviews. Uh, we got one in from our friend Easy E 95 who says, uh, solid group of lads, love the show, great pace, humor, and questions. Thank you, Easy E. Thank you, yeah. Not every day you get to thank Easy E for nice things he says about you. No, he's not saying much these days. Ooh, sad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but who is saying something nice about us is our friend Carmela from Trivial Warfare. Uh, she said, uh, doing a trivia podcast isn't easy. It's not easy to constantly write new questions and to coordinate people and produce a show. Triviality does it well. Four of the nicest guys I've ever had the pleasure of meeting, and they put on an entertaining show. Give it a try. You won't regret it. Thank you. I feel yeah. much more uplifted by these recent reviews. Yes, yeah. instead of pretty boring. Yeah. Although I'm working harder every day. So. Right, that's I'm being true. less boring. Yeah, that's a tough one. It's yeah, really well, tough. Well, thank you, Carmela, as a fellow podcaster. We really appreciate it. And uh, I'm not sure. We just recorded an episode with uh, Carmela. I'm not sure if it aired yet or if it will shortly air. But uh, it was a blast having you on the show as well. So thank you. And after some discussion, the answers are locked in here. All right. So question one in the category of dogs How many times does Ubu bark in the Little Production Company sequence after Simpsons episodes? I actually uh, guessed zero here, and I bet 10 points. We wagered 20, and I think he just barks once. Once is correct. Question number two in the category of Scarface. What's the name of the film where Al Pacino recruits Matthew McConaughey to consult for his sports betting racket? Oh, well, I don't know here, but I've uh, seen a couple Al Pacino movies. Uh, oh, I have not seen this one. But uh, I said, any given Sunday. Oh, that's a good one. That's a football movie. That's a football movie, yeah. Uh, I was thinking maybe it's Jack and Jill. It's not uh, another classic Pacino. Uh, no, uh, I can't think of anything. So we said Deuce is Wild, which is a, probably a made-up movie. We wager 10. Uh, no, this one is called Two for the Money. Two for the Money. For the record, I wagered 10 points. Al Pacino did not say that, I don't believe. But uh... And for question number three, in the category of Superman, which one-hit wonder sang the 1990s song Kryptonite? 
Again, with 10 points, I put three doors down. With uh, 10 points and a pretty loud, yeah, we said uh, three doors down. Points all around. It's the song I did. Uh, I did karaoke at yeah. Cake Bowl. <laughs> Fun fact. Quote, one. Matt, I will never do karaoke <laughs> ever, Matt. never, ever. Three buckets of beer later. <laughs> there, and they yeah! were there were just bottles. It was just buckets. It's just it three was... <laughs> buckets of beer later. <laughs> Vindicated. <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> Question number four in the category of old French cathedrals. What is the apocalyptic nickname given to the backfield of the 1924 Notre Dame football team? Um, all I know about uh, Notre Dame is uh, the touchdown Jesus back there because of the <laughs> the Blackhawks hockey game that <laughs> was at that field. <laughs> um, I wagered zero points, and I put touchdown Jesus. Uh, we unfortunately wagered zero here. I think their fullback was actually Ric Flair. Um, said that the answer is the Four Horsemen. The Four Horsemen is correct. I had to have one wrestling reference in here. <laughs> <laughs> And to close us out in the category of North America, which minor holiday celebrates uh, Mexico's defeat of France in the Franco-Mexican War in 1862? I wagered uh, another zero on this one. I figure the reason you don't give a precise date on your question is because it's Cinco de Mayo. Mm. Yep, we had wagered 15 and maybe a minor holiday there, but here in America, we really celebrated for some reason. Uh, And... We said Cinco de Mayo. And taking on even greater significance in 1984, when I was born, it is Cinco de Mayo. (laughs) I see what you did there. Yep. Answers one, two, three, four, five. Mm Mm-hmm. Good job. I didn't get it because I only got two other questions (laughs) right. Yeah, when we had three doors down, four horsemen, and then Cinco de Mayo, we worked our way backward. And that's how I was able to get the dog, because we was initially wrong. Yeah, it's a pretty sharp... Yeah. Bark. And uh, after that dreadful uh, final round for me, <laughs> I uh, settled at 50 points. But today's cream of the crop, or should I say cheese of the crop, the mozzarella stick Avengers, you are today's cream of the crop. I am the cream, yeah. The cream of the crop. Yeah, it was a, a good game. Uh, we were not Swiss cheese. No holes in our game today. Uh Except for the entire second round, I uh, was like, "I'm looking down." In don't the way. don't look at that. <laughs> just just focus on that end score. Just win, baby. L. Davis and I, me. I I'm, say it too. Hold on, I'm looking at Neil here. He put his headphones on. He's holding the microphone. It's like he somehow wants to not break his non-attendance streak or something. Is that uh, accurate? Wow, Neil, that was controversial. Yeah, that was that was a pretty hor- <laughs> horrible thing to say on the air, but. Uh, I don't know why you would come on and just say that, but uh, for shame, sir. But it was a blast having uh, Byron write that game for us. Thank you so much, and thank you for being a Patreon supporter as well. Yeah, it's my pleasure, guys. Any uh, any shout-outs that you want to give? None come to mind. I don't have anything to promote. Just uh, enjoy hearing the podcast every week. Well, again, thank you so much for being on the program. This was a blast uh, for Jeff, Matt, myself, and sort of Neil today. That was Triviality. I'm going to use math and logic to try and get close. Yeah, we're talking about The Matrix. 1998, right? That was in the 99. Yeah. 97 would be 17 years before. Don't don't get don't math me. <laughs> <laughs>